In 2015, the National Institutes of Health announced it no longer would support biomedical research on chimpanzees. That meant hundreds of aging chimps were retired and needed a home. Many of them found one at a special place in Louisiana. In our Sunday Closer, Dylan visits a retirement community for chimpanzees. Around here, it's all monkey business. Oh, Penny! Penny was born in 1957. Oh, I guess so she, she, she right. might not hear you with that one. Chimp Haven is a retirement home of sorts, a refuge for aging chimpanzees no longer used by the United States government in biomedical research. So what is a typical day like for a chimpanzee? <laughs> oh, well, that's going to vary. It's usually a lot of playing, sometimes a little fighting, um, a lot of sleeping and resting. Dr. Raven Jackson Jewett is attending veterinarian of this Northwest Louisiana sanctuary, which is the largest of its kind in the world. Mackenzie, you be nice. We have 259 different individuals who get to do different things. We allow them to live the chimp's life. They're highly intelligent. So we have to keep them psychologically stimulated. In the wild, the majority of their day is spent trekking and looking for food. Here, we're providing that food for them. So we need to challenge them in various ways, and that's typically done through enrichment. How similar are chimps to humans? We're talking 96, 97% like us. So the idea was that this is great. We have an animal model um, where we can learn more about these disease processes. So we're talking vaccinations for hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and even HIV. If they were used for research, do they come here with certain medical conditions? Yes, we do have animals that have been exposed. They're living longer. Then, of course, we start to see some of those chronic conditions. So are there, are there HIPAA rules or anything that we we're not allowed to know? <laughs> what you're seeing right now for Danielle, you see her meds for hypertension. All right. Next is Gina. You're going to have to crush that. Okay. So that is just iron. That's Star. That's this star. is Penny. And back there, looks, that's Phyllis. For me, always beneficial to recognize and know that we allow them choices. And one of those choices is even the chimpanzee deciding how active they want to be in their health care. He's going to ask her to present her ear for a temperature reading. Put it all away. Come on. All the way. A second chapter for chimpanzees like Ed and Ladybird, one where they get to make the rules. Are they happy here? I think it's difficult to anthropomorphize because they can't tell us, hey, Dr. J, guess what? Today I'm happy. But I look for those clinical indicators that say that I'm happy. In the afternoons, they're usually nesting and they're, you know, pretty silent. And you walk in a wing and you just hear laughter. That, to me, lets me know that there are signs of happiness. First of all, Dylan, you're a natural with the chimps, except oh, yes. for the yelling part. You've got to work on that a little bit. <laughs> um, but it's such a wonderful place. Is there a chance for more chimps to go? Yes, they're actually going to expand the facility in, double in size. Uh, there's more than 100 chimps that... It's a lengthy retirement process, you know, so eventually they will work their way there and they'll, they'll welcome them with open arms. I don't know. I'm no doctor, but they look pretty happy to they be do. down there. And we fed them a lot of bananas. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Dylan, great job. Thanks so much.